And, you know, when you're looking at taking off, something the Ravens did not do last year was score a lot of points. And when you're looking to score points, you might look at, okay, how do we get that? Where's the runway? Where Where is the funnel that allows us to score points? That would be called the red zone. Yeah. Todd Munkin, I don't know if people know this. He was the offensive coordinator of the Georgia Bulldogs the last two years. And last year, the Georgia Bulldogs were the number one team in college football when it comes to red zone offense. I want to say that again. Todd <laughs> Munkins, Georgia Bulldogs, were the number one team in college football when it comes to red zone offense. And a lot of people might be saying, well, yeah, but they were the best team in the country. Of course they would be. That team was not known for offense. That is not what they did. Now, obviously, they were a very good offense. I'm not trying to say they were bad by any means. But when you were looking at rankings, it was, okay, they have the clear best defense, but they don't have the best offense. They have a good offense. It was top five, top five. But they were the best at converting. What are the Ravens trying to be this year? The best defense that converts in the red zone. And how did he do that? How can he help the Ravens turn around the red zone woes that have destroyed them ever since 2019? Well, one thing for certain, two things for sure. It can't be, you know, a stack, a stack everybody on the right side and everybody just run flats. You know, if, it won't be that. It that's, the, be. that's the G Rose special right there. We yeah. call that Denny's you know, number seven. You know, you know. <laughs> But, man, I don't know about you. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, man. Just the creativity. Mm-hmm. And a lot of – even in the red zone, he still had guys, you know, come into motion. He even had Stetson Bennett run run the opposite way, you know, and, and, and the offensive lineman pulling. He had a guy come in motion and the virus, he had a wide receiver come in motion, bunched up. Yes, he did have Stetson Bennett uh, pull out to the right, but he had – he had one – he had his uh, – the one wide receiver – I had a post to to the uh, to the end zone. Had one had a hitch had a hitch route. I mean, he had creativity. Everybody wasn't all next to each other, so even even stretched it out to the running back. Yeah. So you know, I know J.K. J.K. went more than fifteen carries a game. You know, if he felt like he got, if he felt like he's 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 ready to go. Hey, put him in the game. Let him let him punch it in in the red zone. So I mean. He used all weapons in the red zone. It's, so, I mean, you know, back to it again. When we talk about this, you know, this upcoming offense, these these wide receivers, I know everybody's going to be like, oh, you know, you got you to gotta stick Mark Andrews. No, you can't just stick Mark Andrews no more. You have to guard everybody. You have to plan for everybody. This ball is going to be passed around to everybody. And – I think this probably be one of the seasons where we don't see Lamar Jackson have so many design runs neither. Man, I, I'm looking for I'm, I'm looking forward to you know actually to us actually converting on the red zone, man. I mean, it was so disappointing. I mean, granted, we would go for it on fourth. Yeah, you like to see, you love to see you know um, us fighting for it and things of that nature, and not make things happen. You know, but when it, when when we don't make things happen, it hurts. You know, when it, when when you when you hear the after game, well, we went with the analytics. You know, the guys wanted to go for it on the fourth. You know, oh nah, man, nah. I know y'all ain't been working out on fourth, fourth and whatever. You know, y'all ain't been doing right in the red zone, man. Kick that ball, man. Y'all ain't y'all wasn't getting those points. So this year, we need all the points, all the points. I agree, and I think that not only is scoring scoring points great for the team. It's great for the players. You mentioned J.K. Dobbins. He was pissed off. And I don't even necessarily think it was because he wasn't getting the red zone touches. I think it was because we weren't scoring and he wasn't getting the red zone touches. Like, he's watching them. And he's like, Greg Roman, put me in the game. He's like, this is what I do. Like, I don't think, you know, any player would be upset, right? Like, I don't think LeBron James is upset if he doesn't get to take the last shot and the shot goes in, right? 
He's not upset. The shot True. goes in. He's like, boom, let's go. Shout out. That's why I kicked it out to Danny Green in the NBA Finals against the Miami Heat. You know, and last night, you know, the other night, I mean, he didn't have no points the first half. Then he started cooking 21, 8, and 8. You know, <laughs> you know? so, you know. <laughs> If y'all can't tell, this is being recorded on Monday. Lakers <laughs> play tonight. <laughs> but, um, but like overall, you know, it's people get upset when it's, oh, I want to take the last shot. And then the guy that they went with misses. And imagine, right? Imagine you're Kevin Durant. You're, you know, you're one of these elite players that you know you can make the game winning shot, right? And they keep going with. I hate to do this to my guy because I love him. one of my favorite players of all time, but they keep going with Russell Westbrook, man. And Russell Westbrook be going up yeah. for the game once and keep missing. Yeah. And Kevin Durant is sitting there and he's like, bro, can you give me the ball? <laughs> like, I want to take that game when he shot because over time, when you just keep failing and it keeps not going to your hands, when you know you are the best option, yeah. that's going to piss you off. But Todd Munkin, his red zone offense wasn't give it to Brock Bowers every time. It wasn't run it up the middle with Stetson Bennett. When they had, you know, George Pickens, it wasn't throw it up to George Pickens every time. It was the exact same Todd Munkin philosophy we've seen from him for the last 30 years he's been coaching, which is I am going to utilize everybody. Mm -hmm. But it works. And so we're going to see JK touches in the red zone where he scores. We're going to see, you know, I fantasy players are going to hate this. Um, don't draft anybody from the Ravens in fantasy unless you no want to just like root for your guys, but it's going to go to everybody. And I think that's going to help the team because they're going to be happier and they're not going to be frustrated with their offensive coordinator. Like they were so often under Greg Roman. How many times did we see Hollywood call out Greg Roman? Des Bryant. I mean, Des Bryant was like, bro, we got red zone concepts. Like we got these plays. And we never use them. Like, what's the point of practicing them if you're never going to use them? But I think Todd Munkin is actually going to use the the personnel and the plays that they can they can execute with. And that's something that will help. Again, not just putting points on the board because that's great. But it's the morale of the players, whether they score or not, it's the morale of the players when they, just as the team scores, they're going to be happier. It's hard to be upset with the offensive coordinator when your team just scored five consecutive touchdowns. Like, it, like it, if you're this mad that you don't have one of the five touchdowns because the Ravens decided to go QB sneak from the one that decided to go hard play action to you on, you know, the goal line, they hit Mark Andrews, they go five wide, they hit a slant, you know, they do all these things. It's like, I highly doubt JK Dobbins or Gus Edwards is going to be like, man, I should be getting these balls. It's like, Dude, we're scoring. We're happy. Yep. It's when they go, yeah, we're not going to give it to you. And then they fail. And then they fail. And then they fail. And then Greg Roman calls out. With, I brought it up earlier. The Denny's number six. And he, <laughs> he just rolls out Lamar to the right side. Yeah. And nothing happens. Yeah, man. I don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, you know what? You know what? We can talk about the infamous, infamous Super Bowl play when uh, Pete Carroll didn't give the ball to uh, Marshawn. I mean, granted, Marshawn, you know, he's dealt, he's dealt with it, and, you know, he's a businessman and everything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you hear when you hear him in certain interviews, he talk about it, and, he, you know, he finally reflects on it. You know, he'll let, you know, he'll let, he'll let people know, like, I've been doing my thing that whole game, man. I'll be right there. Yeah, I even, you know, I think Vince, I think Vince Wilford was the defensive tackle for the Patriots, too, in that Super Bowl game. And he, uh, he gave, and I, I don't think he truck. I think he truck Vince Will for it. Um, but instead, you know, you want you want to throw a slant, you know. So I mean, I definitely definitely understand that. And you know, we always, like I said, man, we always tell the guys, you know, want to go forward on fourth and things like that. But you know, with the offense that's that we can possibly be seeing in this next in these next few years, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about going forward on fourth all the time. Or, you know, because, you, I mean, these guys are already going to be riled up. I don't know if you heard or seen it. I don't know how truthful it is. But um, it was because it was in sort of a way consulted to Lamar about them making a move on Tom Monk. And, and Lamar, you know, 
kind of agreeing with it, like, yo, that's that, that's the guy. Mm-hmm. Like, we need him. So uh, <laughs> you finally, you know, getting somebody um, that Lamar agrees with, you know, because, I mean, everybody can try to – before the contract was done, everybody can try to say, you know, the Ravens made him, this offense made him. No, the Ravens took a chance on him. I mean, that's what you do when you draft guys. But Lamar Jackson made that Pee Wee offense what it was in 2019 <laughs> and even, you know, a little bit in 2020. I mean, let's be let's be honest. When you got a when when you got a when you got a star stellar player, um, they can make they can make lim- they can make lemons into lemonade, and that's what Lamar Jackson did with that offense. I mean, he he took everybody by storm in 2019. Still made a little little bit happen in 2020. I mean, you can't be mad. You can't be mad at the man for doing what he can do. You know, with what he was given with. So now, you know, he's given he's he's given some better talent. He's given a new head coach. Um, and possibly we're going to see more points in the red with the red zone. I think, like you say, uh, and when uh, Tom Monk was at Georgia, there was number one at the Wolverines, the Michigan Wolverines was number two, uh, in red zone efficiency. So, I mean, you know, when you hear numbers like that, and the Tom Monk was top five, top five with had a top five offense back to back, and he still made things work when George Pickens left, he was just throwing in the tight ends and running in a running back. <laughs> he was making it work with a, and it's no disrespect to Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett, he did, he did, his, he did the damn thing um, as a QB for uh, UGA. He did it with a guy. I don't believe, I don't believe Stetson Bennett got, got drafted. Did he? he? Did oh, he got shout drafted? out, shout out to Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams. They selected him. Okay, which round? It was late. It was a, it was a late round. I feel like it was early. Hold on. Okay. So I mean, That's but either but either way, you know, he was a service he was a service serviceable court QB that you know, made. Okay, he was a service serviceable QB that made that offense you know work in the college level. Now you about now Tom Monk is about to get a real live playmaker at QB. That's going to make some things happen. Um, it's about to be another highlight season. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, I don't think people are ready for how different this Ravens offense is going to be. It's not going to be the same. Like, this no, is this is, this, this is how ready you should be. When you see Patrick Ricard puts out there and tweets, say, hey, man, I know I'm not going to see the field a lot, but I'm a team player. Yo, it's about to really be a change of Baltimore uh, offense. Like, it's really – like when you're when when your highest paid fullback knows he's not about to see the field a lot, he's like, yo, he, he's taking it on the chin. <laughs> but he's going to get it yeah. in any other way, though. 